Hello everyone and welcome to another JavaScript programming tutorial. My name is Adam and I will be your instructor throughout this lesson. Now to give yourself a good sense of what we're going to be creating throughout the lesson, you can go to adamcorey.com and click my little doomsday countdown link here and it'll open up this little window that shows a doomsday countdown. And This is what I decided to play with to build my application for a doomsday countdown December 21st 2012 because there's a lot of people who believe in the doomsday countdown and maybe they want to put all the money in their bank account in my bank account before the world ends I can take their money and maybe do something nice with it you know since the world is going to end anyway but that gives you a sense of what you can do with this kind of application you can also count down to Christmas 2012 if you're a Christmas nut or you know somebody that's a Christmas nut you can build them a countdown to Christmas so they can anticipate it that much more. Or Hanukkah, or whatever kind of holiday or cultural traditions that you have focused around some kind of date, okay? Okay, we're going to start with the humble beginnings of an HTML file. So we're going to start within the head element. We're going to open up a scripting block. We'll make its type equal to text JavaScript. We'll close that and make sure that we put the closing tag for the script element. Now we're going to put all of our JavaScript within a function that we're going to name CDTD, short for countdown to target date. Open close parentheses, open a curly brace, go down a couple of lines, and close off your curly brace. That way you have your nice function nest all set up and ready to go. And we're putting all of our code inside of a function. That way we can execute the code over and over throughout the countdown as we need to. Now the first line in that function is going to be creation of a variable that we're going to call Xmas, short for Christmas. And that's going to be equal to new date. So we're going to use the date object here. And then within the parentheses for the date object, we're going to type in double quotes, a set of double quotes. And within that set of double quotes, we're going to put the date and time that we want to count down to. So I'm going to target December 25th, 2012, which is Christmas of this year. And it's going to be one minute after that day starts. So one minute into December 21st, 2012 is going to be my target countdown date. And there are different formats that you can supply to the date object if you would like to assign a specific date like I have here. This is just one format that I thought was very clear and simple for this type of tutorial. Now the next variable that we have to compare to that first variable or compare against it is going to be called now. And that's going to be equal to new date object as well and that's going to be left empty that way it can be set for today whatever the current date and time is for the current day is going to be put in this variable called now so you're going to calculate the difference between now and Christmas 2012 now we can get that time difference very simply by creating a new variable and call it time diff and that's going to be equal to Xmas dot get time we're using the get time method to create a specific format that we want to perform the equation we want a specific format so we're going to put now dot get time as well so to get the time difference between Christmas and now we use Xmas dot get time method minus now dot get time so what we can do is go down a couple of lines we're going to create a new variable and we're going to call it seconds and that's going to be equal to time diff divided by 1000 and what that does is it takes the raw milliseconds of the time diff here and it divides it by 1000 to give you how many seconds are in the time differential. Because the time diff var is milliseconds. So all you have to do is divide those milliseconds by 1000 and you'll get how many actual seconds are in that time difference. Now we're going to have to do one more thing here. We're going to say math.floor because we want to round down the value that we get from dividing the time diff by a thousand because it might be a decimal and you don't want it really to be a decimal you want to perform the math dot floor on it so that way it rounds the number that we get back down so it doesn't have a decimal so at this point you have access now to how many seconds are in between now and Christmas 2012 and you can display that to yourself if you want but at this point we're not going to do that yet we're going to assemble the minutes now and the minutes is going to be a similar equation so let's call this variable minutes and we're going to divide the seconds by 60 very simple and that will give you how many minutes are between now and Christmas 2012 now let's just copy that minutes line and we'll do the same thing for the hours So we'll call this one hours 
and we can divide the minutes by 60 to get however many hours are left between now and Christmas 2012. Now let's just copy this line and we can get the days now. How many days are left between now and Christmas 2012 by dividing the hours by 24. Let's save our file so we don't lose any of this work. Now at this point we can begin to display things to ourselves especially once we put a timer in place because we're gonna have to put a timer in place that's going to tick every second. It's gonna make this function run every single second and as it ticks down we want to render things onto the page so what we'll do in the body section at this point is we'll pop in these four div elements you can see that each one has a unique ID this one has days box hours box mins box and sex box so what I'll do is put the values for those things within the corresponding box in the HTML so right here under our days var we're gonna pop in four lines that are gonna populate the inner HTML of these four little divs down here by saying document get element by ID and then you target which div element that you want by its ID here and then you say dot inner HTML property is equal to days so you can just populate that with the days variable it'll render to the page in the appropriate HTML container that you want it to go in now to get this function kind of looping on itself what we're gonna have to do is create a timer so we'll say bar timer you can name that whatever you want I'm just gonna name mine timer I'm gonna use the set timeout method on it and this is what creates our timer and this gets two parameters the first parameter is the function that we want to run which is this one right here and since we're setting the timer within that function that means it's gonna loop on itself and then we the second parameter is how often you want the timer to execute this one will be one second so I'm gonna put 1000 milliseconds and that's equal to one second so what this line does when this function runs the first time it's gonna hit this line down here at the end of it and it's just gonna loop the function make it run again so that way the function just keeps running every one second until we use clear timeout on it to stop the timer and we're gonna do that only if the target date has been reached if now is equal to Christmas or if now is equal to or greater than Christmas now to get these things rendering we're gonna go under our last div element here and it's important to put this script element under those HTML elements that way they're recognized by the JavaScript because if you try to run something that targets certain HTML elements before the page is fully loaded and those elements are loaded to the DOM then JavaScript is not going to find them so you got to put this underneath so we'll put script type same thing as before JavaScript we'll close that and we'll make sure we close off our script element and within it all we want to do is fire off the function cdtd the countdown to target date and you can break that statement there with semicolon or not it doesn't matter I'm gonna put a semicolon there so what this is gonna do when the page hits this line when the DOM is loaded this line right here that means this function cdtd is going to fire off it's gonna execute one time and when it does execute that one time it's set to loop on itself every second so now when we run this page we're going to see values being populated into these divs and we still have one more calculation to set up we just want the remainders of certain things here I'll show you what I'm talking about so you see what I have here is 249 days 5986 hours left this many minutes left until Christmas and then this many seconds you can see the seconds are ticking down and the minutes would tick down too also and the hours if you sat there and watched it that long now this is not the kind of values that you want to show the user you want to show them just the remainders you want to show them 249 days but you don't want to show them 5986 hours you want to show them only how many hours a remainder if they were all divided by the days you know what I'm saying it would never be more than 24 hours so you can have 249 days left and maybe six hours and that's a very simple conversion or calculation that we can do here right under this days variable and we'll use the modulus operator to grab only the remainder of dividing those numbers by 24 or 60
All right, so right under this line, let's pop in those three lines that will calculate the hours, minutes, and seconds remainders only. You don't want to show the full amount of hours till Christmas. You only want the remainders. So you use the modulus. And what this line is doing is basically saying hours is equal to hours modulus 24. And if you want, you can go to develop PHP. And I wrote some information about the modulus operator recently and I notice a lot of sites don't really uh, explain modulus well so if you want to click on mine the modulus operator in JavaScript within my JavaScript library I explain it well so I only mention that because some people might be looking at this and saying what the hell is this equation even doing it's saying hours is equal to hours modulus 24 minutes is equal to minutes modulus 60 and you can just shorthand that equation by saying hours modulus equals 24, minutes modulus equals 60. So now once we get those calculations in place, let's run the page again and see what happens. Now we get something that's a little more readable to our visitors and understandable. You got 249 days left till Christmas 2012, 10 hours, 50 minutes, and 10 seconds, or however many seconds they're counting down. And when this counts down to zero, you'll see when the seconds get down to zero, this will turn to 49. And the seconds will go back to 60. See? Okay, so now you've got your countdown running, no problem. And I'm going to throw in a little bit of bonus logic for you guys. And here's a little if condition that you can throw in place that says if time diff is less than or equal to zero, then you want to run the clear timeout method on the timer. That will stop your timer from running, and then you can do whatever you want when you know that Christmas is here. Your script will know that Christmas is here, but you can execute any kind of code you want. Maybe you want to send people to some other document, or you want to write something to the page like I did, say Christmas is here, so it'll stop the timer, and remove all the other stuff, and it'll just say Christmas is here. But really, I just wrote this so you can put here, I'll put a comment. Run any code needed for countdown completion. So when the countdown is finished, when it gets down to zero, or if the target date happens to be in the past of whatever now is, then you want to run some special code. That's what you do right here at this point. That way, this application, you can start it now for a target date way in the future. And then when it gets to that target date, you don't have to do anything. It's already It'll already be programmed to show them some kind of alternate content once the date has arrived. That is what you do in this if condition right here. Now let's just go down into the HTML and you would really want to use HTML and CSS to really design it, give it a really nice look like I did on my website. But I'm just going to write, for example's sake, days remaining. I'm going to give it a semicolon. I can copy that line and go under here and put hours remaining there. And this will give you a clearer depiction of what's going on. So you have days remaining till Christmas 2012, 249. Hours remaining 10, minutes 45, and the seconds 50. Like I said, when this gets down to zero, in real time on the page, in an animated fashion, the user is going to see the minutes tick down as well. And if they sit there long enough, they'll watch the hours tick down. But nobody's that much of a freak. But it's still a cool application to run. So like I said, you take CSS and you target all of these divs. You can even give these a class. If I wanted to give these a class attribute of, say, timebox, and I give all of those divs a class of timebox, just like that. Now what I can do in my CSS is target that timebox. If I wanted to make all the numbers that are ticking down really big, put them in a nice bordered box, whatever, I just target that timebox. And JavaScript can target the divs independently using their ID. But I'll take that out of there and I'll leave the designing or the visual aspects, the eye candy of the application, those all those aspects I'll leave up to you guys and your own individual creativity. Okay, so that wraps it up. We hope you've enjoyed this JavaScript date and time countdown tutorial. We'll see you in the next lesson.